Osho integration. The term Osho integration derives from osteon, which is the Greek word for bone, and the Latin word to make whole, which is integrate. So these two words, osteon and integrate, join together to form Osho integration. And this refers to the process that will take place between the living bone and the surface of implant. Osho integration was and still is considered as the most important factor in maintaining implant stability. The genesis of Osho integration as a concept was introduced by Paul Ingwer Brainmark in 1969, who was a professor at the Institute of Applied Biotechnology, University of Gothenburg. And Osho integration was defined as a direct connection between living bone and a load carrying endosseous implant at the light microscopic level. Here you can see the light microscopic picture of integration between the bone and the implant. A point to be noted here is that this contact is established without interposition of non-bone tissue between the normal remodeled bone and the implant. So there is no soft tissue or connective tissue between the implant and the bone for osseo integration to happen. The success of implant surgery is determined by the biomechanical quality of bone tissue located at a distance less than around 100 to 200 microns from the implant surface. So this quantity is an important parameter for surgical success and it was observed that bone implant contact ratio that is BIC in successful oral implants varied between 60% and 99%. And this BIC ratio is correlated with the biomechanical properties of the bone implant interface which increases during bone healing. The integration between bone and implant can occur in different ways. So either there can be an intimate contact with gingival tissues which result in a fibro-osseous integration wherein connective tissue is present between the implant and bone. This fibro-osseous integration is also termed as pseudo-ligament or peri-implant ligament or peri-implant peri membrane. And the second type is contact osteogenesis wherein mature bone ingrowth form around the dental implant and this results in mechanical interlocking. Other related terms are adaptive osseo integration, which is basically osseous, osseous tissue approximating the surface of the implant without apparent soft tissue interface seen at the light microscopic level, and biointegration, which is a direct biomechanical bone surface attachment confirmed at electron microscopic level. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of osseo integration. Osseo integration belongs to the category of direct or primary healing. It can be compared to direct fracture healing in which the fragment ends become united by bone without intermediate fibrous tissue or fibrocartilage formation. Osseo integration unites bone not to bone but to an implant surface which is a foreign material. Thus the material plays a decisive role for the achievement of union. Blood is invariably the first tissue that the implant will contact when introduced into the bone. This contact results in a series of biological processes like protein deposition, coagulation, inflammation and tissue formation. So on the first day after implantation, a blood clot is formed adjacent to the implant surface and neovascularization begins within 24 hours. Along with the blood clot, dead and living bone tissue are also present. Bone debris may also be present around the implant surface. So on the right side you can see the first cells to appear are the erythrocytes, the red blood cells, along with neutrophils and macrophages. New bone formation on the implant surface is observed in 5 to 7 days when calcification from the host bone onto the implant surface is also observed. This newly formed bone fills the gap between mature bone tissue and implant surface which takes about several weeks or months. At the microscopic level, the infiltrating macrophages and monocytes begin to migrate into the bone by day 4 and replace the blood clot. So the blood clot is gradually replaced by differentiating mesenchymal cells which are recruited from the bone marrow around the newly developing blood vessels and these mesenchymal cells differentiate into osteoblasts. 
After 8 to 12 weeks, the peri-implant surface interface is completely replaced by mature lamella bone in direct contact with the implant surface, thus completing the initial phase of osho integration. So gradually, after several weeks or months after the implant surgery, this newly formed bone tissue is replaced by mature bone tissue around the implant. The bone remodeling process is the last stage of osho integration which starts around the third month and after several weeks of increasingly high activity, it slows down and continues for the rest of life. In the jaw bones, the coronal part of the dental implants become firmly anchored within compact bone, whereas the apical segment is exposed to cancellous bone and bone marrow. Primary stability is obtained by congruency and press fitting, which leads to direct bone implant contact. Primary stability is basically absence of mobility in the bone bed after the implant has been placed. It depends on the mechanical engagement of an implant within the fresh bone socket. A key factor for the implant primary stability is the bone to implant contact that is BIC which includes factors such as implant shape, length and diameter which can cause an increase in the contact area between the implant and bone thus increasing the implant primary stability. During the early stages of healing, mechanical stability decreases while biological stability increases. Other than BIC, other factors which influence primary stability are implant geometry, bone density and quality, surgical protocol like osteotomy preparation which includes the skill of the surgeon, initial stability at placement that is termed as primary stability and the development of osho integration in the following healing process is termed as secondary stability. These are two important factors for implant success. So in this graph you can see during the initial week the primary stability which corresponds to the which is provided by the old bone is less and it increases gradually providing stability whereas secondary stability provided by new bone is higher in the initial time which gradually reduces over a period of weeks. And lastly the factors that affect osho integration. Implant related factors which enhance osho integration are its design, a press fit implant is desirable chemical composition, surface topography and coatings. So there are various methods which are used to alter the surface topography of implants such as electro polishing, mechanical polishing, blasting. Then there are additive processes like hydroxyapatite, titanium plasma sprayed surfaces, iron deposition. Inappropriate porosity can inhibit osha integration. The state of host bed for a suitable osho integration to happen, there should be minimal surgical trauma, vascularity and cellularity of the implant surface, whereas bone defects and osteoporosis, smoking, diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and an advanced age can all lead to inhibition of osho integration to some extent. Mechanical stability, as we just saw, primary implant stability with no micro movement is desirable, whereas excessive implant mobility can lead to failure of the implant and adjunctive therapies like bone grafting, osteogenic coatings, biophysical stimulation, systemic administration of ibandronate and human parathyroid hormone enhance osteo integration as due to their indirect effect on the formation of bone. Whereas irradiation, pharmacological agents like cyclosporin A, cisplatinum, warfarin, these therapies inhibit osteo integration. So this was about osho integration. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.